this amazing, beautiful morning and this Sunday uh, in our lives. And I ask you that you please bless this service, that you bless uh, the, the, the word that we're going to hear as we study your scriptures, as we study this topic today. I ask you please speak to each one of us. Open our hearts, open our ears to hear what you are eager to say to each one of us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Well, uh, welcome. Welcome to House of the Gospel. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today for our last sermon in our series of 40 Days of Prayer. Uh, we started this series in uh, January, January 5th, and um, you know, it's, it's been a little bit more than 40 days. It's about 45th day since January 5th. Uh, but nevertheless, um, you know, when, when I look back at these 40 days, so many things have happened within our group, within our personal life, within uh, the church, and uh, some of you have already been sharing some things with me as far as what God has been doing in your life, and I'm grateful that we had this opportunity to, to study prayer. Uh, now, do not be discouraged if for some reason you and your group did not finish the 40 days of prayer or are not going to be finishing this coming week. It's okay. You can continue to get together and finish that study of 40 days of prayer, you didn't pay $10 for nothing, okay? So uh, make, sure, make sure you finish that study. It's very, very powerful. Um, and I just I want to say that, you know, in, in order for us to kind of experience, continue experiencing these 40 days of prayer, we want to hear from you what God has done in your life. We want to hear a testimony. We want to hear... Uh, maybe a little something of what God has done for you, to you, in your life throughout these 40 days. So if you can email us, if you can text us, if you can, I don't know, uh, personal message on Facebook or something or on uh, Insta, uh, tell us what God has done. Also, at the end of this service and at the end of the services in the next few weeks, we're going to have a camera stationed downstairs where you can share your story into the camera, and we can show it here uh, throughout March, okay? So we would love to hear your story. Please don't be shy to speak into the camera when somebody comes up to you and says, hey, there's a camera. Tell your story, okay? So what God has done for you in your 40 days of prayer. Today, we're finishing with a very interesting topic, uh, a topic titled, When God Says No. When God says no. Uh, I'm pretty sure that many of you have had an instance in your life when God has told you no. And probably the reason you remember all those instances is not because God is so mean and so horrible and so bad, but probably because we tend to remember no's better than yeses. Right? You still remember that one time when that one girl rejected you. Right? You still remember that one time when that one time when that car stalled on you, right? Uh, you still remember that one time when your parents said no to you when you asked, "Can I do this?" Right? So we re tend to remember no's more than we remember yeses, and I think uh, that's part of the reason why we think uh, when, when, why we are it's so hard for us to accept the no's that God has. Uh, prepared for us, or that God is responding to us. So let's make sure we have our notes here. It's a little bit dark outside, uh, outside, out there. Out there, maybe we can get some lights going so you guys can actually see what you're writing down, right? Um, but, you know, I'm still thankful to this day that when I was praying uh, to marry that one crush in my life and I was 17 years old, that it didn't happen. Okay? And not because that one crush was a very bad person. She was a good person. She still is a good person. But it's because I wasn't ready. And it's because I found someone better. God found her for me, right? Uh, so, I, you know, I still remember to this day when God said no to me when I wanted something uh, faster for a car or a more better looking car than the first Civic that I drove, right? Uh, and God 
God stopped me from getting into debt. I know some of you got into debt by buying a new car. What's wrong with you? God was telling you you're not ready for it. You don't have money for it. And you still did it. And now you're like, I should have listened to God, right? But I'm still thankful to God for those times when he said no to me. Multiple times in my life. And, uh, and that's, that's what I want us to talk about today. What do you do with a no? What do you do when God says no? No, that's not the person you should be dating. No, that's not the thing that you should be buying. No, not yet. The house is not the one that you should be getting, right? No, you shouldn't be making the move. No, that's not the job I want you to have, right? What do we do with all those no's? First and foremost, I do want to say that God promises to answer our prayers. God does promise to answer our prayers, and my clicker is not working for some reason. If we can, yeah, there we go. It's, <laughs> it's saying no to me. Okay. Uh, in Jeremiah 33, 3, a very popular passage that oftentimes we take out of context, but Jeremiah 33, 3 is a famous quick phone number that we can use to call to God. Where we say, where God says, not we say, where God says, call to me and I will answer you. Call to me and I will answer you. One thing I want you to remember is that God always answers. He always answers your prayer. He always answers your prayer. He promises this. The key is, and the trick is, to know that God doesn't always answer yes. There are times when he says no. There are times when he says wait. There are times when he says you need to grow up. Okay? You need to grow up a little bit physically, spiritually, emotionally. Hold on a second. Grow up. And once you are mature enough, you can have it. Or you can have her. Or you can have him. Right? Uh, in a little while, he can say, he can answer in his own way. He says, I know you want it this way, but guess what? I have my own way that I want to answer. So there's, God always answers, it's just he doesn't always answer with a yes. Now, there's a lot of examples in the Bible when God says no to some major biblical heroes. Remember the story of Abraham? When he didn't have a child until he was, or Sarah was, like 100 years old. Remember that? Uh, uh, remember the story of Moses? God told Moses no a few times, and he even told Moses, no, you're not going to go into the promised land. God said no to Daniel at one point. He said no to Job. Remember the story of Job? That was a lot of no's to Job. I'm taking everything away from you. Uh, he said he, uh, he would say no to Jonah. He said no to Elijah. Um, how many times did he say no to Joseph, right? When Joseph was in all those struggles and sufferings, or at least not yet, right? He said no to Peter. He said no to Apostle Paul. And we're going to see an example of that. You know, but the highlight here that I think of God saying no is when God said no to Jesus himself. When God said no to Jesus, his son, there was a point in time when Jesus asked God about something, and God said, no, it's not going to happen. It wasn't a good time. It wasn't an easy time, but God did not answer, and that's the reason we're here, because God said no to Jesus at the time. We're going to take a look at the passage later. So why does God say no? There are a lot of reasons why God may say no in your life. And some of you might be getting an idea why God is saying no to you today, right? Uh, but I want to propose three reasons, and I want to just encourage you and caution you, actually. Use these to comfort yourself. Don't use these no's to figure out, why is God doing something horrible in somebody else's life? Well, not horrible. Why is God answering no to him or to her. Oh, it's because you're a sinner, you know. Oh, it's because you don't pray right. 
don't, don't, we're experts at figuring out and giving advice to others when God is saying no to them, right? Think about these three reasons in, in, uh, in relation to yourself. Why is God telling you no uh, on that relationship? Why is God telling you no on that job, on that house, on that family situation, on that, re- uh, on that relationship again? Uh, why is God saying no to you? Okay? So, three reasons. First reason, first and foremost, is because God says no when he has a better perspective. When he has a better perspective. How many of you of you have found yourself in a situation when you saw someone who's going to mess up in the next few minutes and you tried to stop them, but they still did it? either in sports or in life or in a relationship, you're like, sister, you're dating the wrong guy. And the sister is like, no, I'm not. I love him, right? And you're like, sister, you're dating the wrong guy. No, he's so much, he's the amazing, best of the best of the best. But you know she's dating the wrong guy because you have a different perspective. And that perspective is, you're not in this crazy emotional feeling toward him, or maybe you saw him somewhere doing something, right? Or, you know, uh, oftentimes you parents, you warn your children to not run to that street, to, to run slower, to not run but to walk, right? The whole idea, don't run around the pool, right? Because you're going to fall and crack your head open. Well, until you do it, you're still going to do it. But somebody who has a different perspective or a bigger perspective might warn you and say, no, stop, don't do it. Well, guess what? God has a bigger perspective than we do. What you see in life is like a dust size compared to what God sees in life. You see tomorrow, you see today, you see that person, that problem right there in front of you. God sees everything beyond that. He sees the consequence of your decision for the next few days, for the next few months, for the next few years. Still amazes me how some people get into marriage with like super humongous problems that everyone, that each of them has. Like uh, getting into marriage with like $100,000 in debt or something, getting into marriage and just because, you know, we want to sleep together. Like you don't do things just because you're following emotions. God says, look, I know so much more than you do, so guess what? Trust me, I have a bigger perspective. And if you're feeling that God is not walking with you in that time period, maybe that's a time when God is saying no to you. You hear God's no when your life is going in a stumbling kind of way. When things are not working out, when things are happening in a way that you did not plan them to happen, you know that's God telling you no or slow down, okay? So the reason God says no is because oftentimes he has a bigger perspective. Check out Hebrews 4.13. It tells us the following about our God. And it says, God knows about everyone everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of, your living, of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from Him. What can you hide from God? What can you hide from God? What can you hide from God? Some are still doubting. What can you hide from God? Exactly. You cannot hide anything from God. Check this out. It's such an interesting phrase. Everything about us is bare... And wide open. Like he sees you from the top, from the bottom, from the left, on the right, on the left. He sees you on the inside. Like all of your insides are open in front of him. He sees what you're thinking about right now. He sees it. He sees, he sees your, your thoughts, your soul, your heart, everything within you. He sees and he knows nothing can be hidden from him. And because he has that perspective, he knows what is best for you. Because he has that perspective, he knows 
your feelings. He knows your emotions. He knows what you're going through. So he says, no. He says no to your prayer. So uh, God's perspective, remember, is much more bigger and much more better than our perspective. You know, this, this, this point reminded me of, the, of those instances when, as a younger person, I was, uh, uh, I used, I, I loved to play with ants, okay? You know those little tiny insects called ants, A-N-T-S, right? And uh, uh, I love to see their trails and how they're like trailing through my garden and, well, yeah, and, and, and trying to get into the house, right? So I would play around by putting different obstacles in front of them or on the side of that trail. And I would put like sticks or I would pour water, make a water fountain, like, yeah, beautiful, right? Uh, uh, I would put my foot down to see what they're going to do. And oftentimes they either go around so you can direct them or they'll go on top and you're like, hey, he's struggling, all right. And, and, you, and I would play around with ants like this. I try not to do that as much as anymore. It's just cruel, right? But I think oftentimes God looks at us like at, at, at the ants. And no, he doesn't play around us with us putting a bunch of obstacles in our life just to see what we're going to do. And look, ah, you're struggling to get over that relationship. You're struggling to get over sin. Ha ha. No, he doesn't do that, right? Uh, the, the cool thing about God is that he sees us like we see those little tiny ants, and he sees like feet ahead, right? And in and, and our language, it's like days ahead, years ahead, and he sees everything that's going to happen to us if we follow this path. So what does he do? In, in, in uh, Proverbs 2.8, it says that God guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. So he, he sees where you're going with all of this. He sees where, what you're asking. And he says, you know what? If I give you this, you're going to fall through that crack in the cement. If, if you go through with this, you're going to get into that water and you're going to drown. Okay, Speaking metaphorically here, right? If you go through this, someone's going to step on you. Someone's going to, you're going to get crushed. You're, you're, I don't want you going this way. I want to guide you and guard your course and protect the way that you're on. And there's a very interesting, the last phrase here, that I, I really want to just make, make sure that you're aware of this last phrase. The way of his faithful ones. You know God is saying yes when you begin to faithfully follow him, his word, his commands, his guidance. And, and you know, it, it just amazed me uh, how many wrong relationships I was in. It amazes me how many wrong decisions I've made through my long, long life of 35 years, right? 34, hold on. 34 years, right? It amazes me how in that short span of time I was able to do so many mistakes already. And as soon as I said, you know what? Forget about all of this. I'm just going to do what God wants me to do. As soon as I started focusing on that, and I wasn't perfect, but as soon as I started doing that, he started leading me in a way where things just started falling into places. And, and, and whenever I asked for a job, he gave me a different job. Whenever I asked for a wife, he gave me a wife I didn't expect to get. Whenever I asked for uh, a car, I got a car I didn't expect to get, right? But things just started falling into place, and they were timely. They were timely, meaning they didn't come too early, and they didn't come too late. And at, the, at this time, maybe you're thinking, well, God is telling me no on these things, but know that God has his timing, and he wants to protect your course and protect your way if you just, just focus on being faithful to him, to his word, to his commands, just reach out to him and say, Lord, I just want to follow you. I just want to be protected by you. I want to do what you want me to do, right? So number one was God has a bigger perspective. That's why he's saying no. Number two, God says no when he has a better plan. So this falls right under that idea of, you know, he has a perspective because he, he sees everything, that what's behind, what's ahead of you, what's to the left, to the right. And 
he also has a better plan for you. In uh, uh, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, God says, the plan uh, of mine is not what you would work out. Neither are my thoughts the same as yours, for my ways are higher than yours. What does that mean? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That means that I have a better plan for you. I think better than you do. God thinks better than you do. Okay, just live with that, all right? And that's actually a cool thing because you can trust his thinking. So God says no when he has a better plan for you. You know, sometimes we, we, big, we build big plans. And look, uh, there's nothing wrong with planning. Uh, I'm not the best at planning, but it's good to plan. But sometimes we just plan everything out so, so nicely, and we have this beautiful piece of paper in front of us, right? Or we type it up into our little Excel form, whatever. And you're like, okay, uh, I'm going to get married at this age. I'm going to get this degree. I'm going to have this profession. I'm going to work for this uh, business or whatever organization. You know, I'm going to have so many children. Uh, I'm, I'm going to retire at this age. Uh, and, you, and we just plan things out. And sometimes we plan things out and we're like, okay, I'm ready, right? But guess what? God has a better plan for you. And if your plans are not going along with his plans, guess what he's going to do? He's going to ruin your plans. Uh, and, and, and he's not going to ruin your plans because, again, he's so evil and he wants you to suffer. He's going to stop your plans So that you can turn towards his plans, towards achieving his plan. And you know, some of you here, you, you've moved multiple times houses, you moved cities, you moved countries. And at some point, God said, yes, you should move. And at some point, God said, no, you should not move. And things like that. God has a plan for you. And when that plan, when your plan falls in with his plan, his better plan, he makes things work out for you. Uh, Hebrews eleven thirty nine through 40, uh, we, we read this passage that says, These were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better. This excerpt, uh, some of you may be familiar with chapter 11 of Hebrews. Chapter 11 of Hebrews is known as, like the chapter of the faithful, right? It, it describes all the faithful people through the Bible in a very short, quick format. It's a summary of the faith heroes. And a few passages before this, it describes the faith heroes who were sawed in half, who were tortured, who were killed, who were uh, persecuted for being faithful to God. And at the end of this long, crazy passage of how people died because they believed in God. He says, they were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised here on earth. But God had planned something better. Guess what? God has an eternity to fulfill his promises. You're just hoping for at least one promise here on earth in the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. This is all you see. But God says, you know what? This is just a small, tiny time period in your life. It's just one cement block that you need to cross. I look at the eternity. I see the full picture. And if you're going to suffer in this life, that's okay, because I have a promise for you after this life. And if you're going to struggle in this life, that's fine, because I have a promise for you after this life. And if there's going to be pain in your life, trust me, I have a promise I want to fulfill in the eternity. So God has all of the eternity to fulfill his promises. So number two, God says no when he has a better plan. And number three, God says no when he has a greater purpose. God says no when he has a greater purpose. 
Psalm 57, 2, I cry out to God most high who fulfills his purpose for me. I think having a purpose is one of the most important things that people are seeking for today. Why am I here on this earth? What am I doing here? What is my role here on this earth? That's what everyone asks. That's what all of you, each one of you asks that, or at least at some point in your life you asked this question, what the heck am I doing here on earth? And some of you, unfortunately, still haven't answered that question, or that question wasn't answered to you. For some of you, that question has been in the process of being answered. And one of the main things I want you to remember is that God has a purpose for you, and it's greater than what you think it is. And actually, I want to invite you to be here every Sunday in March, because every Sunday in March, we're going to talk about the five purposes that God has for your life. We're going to start with that. And, you know, sometimes when you are going, when your goal is to achieve your purposes and those purposes don't fall into the same picture with God, He's not going to go along with you. You know, and sometimes when we are lost with our purpose, we begin to uh, live for a purpose that we think is, is right. Right? So some people, what do they live for? They begin to live for their business or their job. Some people live to get more money. Some people live for the purpose of making their spouse happy or their friend happy. Some live for the sake of their children. They're like, eh, as soon as they're out of here, you know, I'm just going to, you know, whatever, die. So people live for different purposes. And each one of us, we find that purpose if we do not align our purpose with God, we find a purpose that's going to go against His will. So oftentimes God will say, I don't want to answer this prayer a yes because it doesn't go along with my purpose. You know, God has His own purposes for our life, and one of that purpose is to test our faith. Check out 1 Peter 1.7. The purpose of these troubles is to test your faith as fire tests how genuine gold is. Your faith is more precious than gold. You know, some of you are going through some interesting troubles right now. Either a health issue, a friend issue, a family issue, a work issue, a school issue, whatever issue you have been issued... One of the purposes that God is saying no and allowing us to go through some of the troubles is because he wants you to grow in your faith. He wants you to be tested by fire, and he's telling you, I want you to be more holy. I want to work on you. I want to mold you so that you are more faithful to me. And when that process is ongoing when you're finally getting to that point when you are becoming almost like gold when you're becoming more and more holy your purposes begin to align with God's purposes God doesn't do anything just for the heck of it like I do thanks to the ants as weird as that sounds right uh, God doesn't God doesn't do things randomly he doesn't do things spontaneously oh Today, I'm going to make Alex's life horrible. Oh, today, I'm going to get him into a car accident. I don't know. Uh, God does everything. He has everything organized. He has everything planned. And he says, this is the plan I have for your life. And if you don't align your plan with my plan, you are going to be getting a lot of no's from me. So... Perhaps right now he's building your faith. And like gold, he's leading you through the fire of testing. His desire is to make you stronger, not to make you weaker. 2 Corinthians, again, uh, reminds us of the same um, truth. These present troubles are quiet, small, and won't last very long, yet they will produce for us an immeasurably great glory 
that will last forever. So, we don't look at the troubles we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see will soon be over, but the joys to come will last forever. Again, we're not focusing on the troubles that are temporary today, on those no's that God is giving us today, but we focus on that which lasts forever in the eternity. So number three, God says no when he has a greater purpose. So what should I do when God says no? Okay, maybe you figured it out already. You know, God wants my faith to grow. God has a bigger purpose for me. God has a bit better plan for me. Uh, God has a better perspective. You've humbled yourself. You're like, I accept this. How do I react to the no's? What do I do? You know, I talked to many of you throughout the weeks, throughout the days, and this week was an amazing week filled with some interesting conversations and you guys struggle through some of the crazy things, some of the craziest things that people can struggle through. And you have some, um, some uh, very strong pains that you are living through and some very uh, tempting things that you go through. And oftentimes, you know, you pray to God and God is saying no to you. And, you know... I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that when God is saying no to you, don't pay attention to that struggle that he's not relieving or to that problem that he's not solving or to that thing that he's not giving you or to that person that he's not allowing you to be closer to. Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to who God is. And so first thing you can do is trust. When, when God says no, Trust that God does everything in goodness and love. Continue to trust Him. Psalm 25, 10 says, All the ways of the Lord are loving. God is reliable. God is strong to answer your prayer. Trust Him. Reach out to Him and tell Him, Look, I know that everything you're doing you're doing for the goodness, in the goodness and love. So even when he says no, it's a loving no. Because again, he sees the bigger, the bigger picture. A very popular passage that we like to quote and post on social media and, and get inspired by, and some of you are driving around with this passage in your car. In everything, God works for the good of those who love him. Romans 8.28. In everything, God works for the good of those who love him. Again, a very interesting passage where God works for the good of you. He wants what is good for you. He wants what is loving to you. But again, the end of that passage, for whom? For those who love him. So we go back to that idea of trust. Put your trust in God, and he will lead your ways. Put your trust in God, and he will do things that are good for you. Put your faith in him, and he will do what is good for you. You don't have to understand what he's doing. Oftentimes, we ask ourselves this question, right? God, why are you doing this to me? Why are you saying no? Why are you allowing my, uh, my friend to be ill? Why are you allowing all these evil things to happen? Why are you allowing these shootings to happen? Why are you allowing terrorist attacks? Why are you allowing all these things, all these cruel and crazy things to happen in my life and in the life of the, those who are close to me? Why? And we, we love to ask that question, but I think one of the things to help you to, uh, to, to receive what God allows to happen is that you don't have to understand God's answer to know that it is motivated by love. His reason, again, is not to make your life miserable. His reason is to love you. 
And he wants you to feel that and he wants your love back. So sometimes he'll say no and it will be a drastic no. It will be a no that uh, you might, it will be hard to receive, but it's important that when you put your trust in him, when you proclaim your love for him, when you turn to follow him in word and in action, he will do everything motivated by love. So that's number one. Trust that God does everything in goodness and love. Number two, when in pain, pray what Jesus prayed facing the cross. When in pain, pray what Jesus prayed facing the cross. Remember, remember, Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross. He went on the cross willingly, and, he's, and he died for our sins. That's the reason we have salvation. That's the reason we can pray to God. That's the reason we have approach to God, and we have a pathway to God. But it wasn't easy for Christ to do it. And in Mark chapter 14, we read a passage where Jesus is struggling before the cross, and he's praying to his Father, and he says the following words, and I just want to read the last, the last little half of this passage where Jesus prays and says, Abba, my Father, all things are possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me, yet I want your will, not mine, to be done. When in pain, pray what Jesus prayed facing the cross. When you're going through hard times, when you're going through struggles, when you're going through confusing times in, in your life, pray like Jesus prayed in the last part. My Father, all things are possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine, to be done. So first and foremost, affirm God's power. Just like Jesus does. He says, my father, all things are possible for you. You can do anything. You are in control. Acknowledge God's control in your life and tell him, you know what? The strength I have is because of you. The life I have is because you're giving me this life. The health I have is because you're giving me this health. You are the all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, holy God, jealous God, merciful God, faithful God. You are God of power, and you have that power. Affirm his power, just like, did it, just like Jesus said, all things are po possible for you. Second of all, ask with passion. So when you're in pain, when you're struggling, when you hear God saying no for your request, affirm his power and ask with passion. Jesus prayed to the Father, and he said, and he said Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Now, different theologians interpret this differently. Did Jesus really mean what he said or not? But we're reading in the scripture, and it says, Jesus said, please take this cup of suffering away from me. And some of you, when you read the story, you remember, Jesus prayed with such passion that he even sweated with blood. That's how hard his suffering was, and that's how passionate he was. That was his passionate prayer. Father, give me what I ask. What are you asking for today? Are you asking with passion? Are you asking, eh, you know, I really want it, but eh. Ask with passion. I really want you to change my life. I really want you to help me get out of this Situation. I really want you to heal my friend, my sibling, my family member. I want that. I really do. Be passionate about it like you mean it. Affirm his power. Ask with passion. And at the end, accept God's plan. As Jesus said at the end of his prayer, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will not mine to be done. One translation says, yet may your will be done, not mine. What I want most is for God's will to be done. So if it's a no for now, dear Lord, Father, let it be a no. 
if, if I should be, continue to suffer, if I should continue receiving the snow from you, I accept it. I accept it because you have a better plan. I accept it because you have a better perspective. I accept it because you have a bigger purpose for me. And when we accept, we humble ourselves and we say, you know what? I'm nobody and God is everything. And he knows my life. He has that uh, plan. He has that purpose. You know, I can't, I can't imagine Christ's prayer to remove the cup, to take this cup away. I can't imagine this prayer being answered in, with a yes. That would be so cruel of a loving father who sent his son to live this whole life on earth and at the end say, okay, I'm going to take this cup away from you and you're not going to suffer. And he said no to Jesus and Jesus suffered. And as a result, you and I are here today listening to the message of the gospel that Jesus died for you so that you can have eternal life. I'm so grateful that God did not say yes to Jesus at that point. So, remember, when God is saying no, pray like Jesus. Ask with passion, affirm his power, and accept his plan. And finally, expect God to give his grace to handle his answer. When God is saying no, how do you react Number three, expect God to give his grace to handle his answer. When God sends us through certain areas in our life, when he says no, when he sends us things that are hard for us to live with or to carry out, he also sends us power and strength to do it. It's almost like he gives us some shot, shot of energy to go through that what we're suffering through. One of the passages uh, that's not mentioned in here, but uh, it says that when God tests you, he also gives you strength to go through that test. So expect God to give his grace to handle his answer. Apostle Paul was also having some issues with his health. Uh, and uh, it says that he, he confesses to that, and he says, Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, My grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. So God never answered Paul's prayer. And Paul said, I'm fine with that because God said that grace is enough. And God also said that your power is greatest when you are weak. Because I am working through you. You know, I can't count how many moments in my life were the best moments when I was the weakest of God working through my life and through my ministry. When I was either unprepared, underfunded, uneducated on a topic, inexperienced, or just exhausted. It's, it's so weird, but... As soon as I get tired, as soon as I'm like, I just want to put my feet up, God sends a person for me to talk to. It's like, really? Right now? When I'm falling asleep? Or, you know, when I don't have money for something and God works through his ways to send me that one thing or that one opportunity to go somewhere. The ladies today were doing a fundraiser for their conference I'm pretty sure they were worried, how am I going to pay the bill for the conference? I'm pretty sure that today God came through for them and covered, oh, see? For one person, God came through financially. And, and it's when we are weak, it's when we are lost, when we're like, what do I do? What do I do? I got to do something. God says, look, I know you're weak. I know you're uneducated. I know you're inexperienced, underprepared. I'm ready to take care of you. And I'm going to show you my power through your weakness. Last passage I want to share with you. God says, those who know you, Lord, will trust you, and you, you do not abandon anyone who comes to you. God says, I am not going to abandon anyone who comes to me, and those who trust me 
I will be with them. You know, it may be hard to receive a no from God right now. And some of you, I know, I actually know that you've received a no this past week. You've received a no in the past month. You've received a lot of no's in 2020 already from God, where he said no to you in one instance or another. And some of you, guess what? You didn't listen to that no, and you still went ahead with your decision, and you reaped the consequences of that. But others, you're still waiting for God to do something for you. I know it's hard to pray for that family member who hasn't changed in a while and who you're praying for for a long time. Continue to pray for that person. Many of you are praying for health. Continue to pray for health through that no that you're hearing right now. Some of you are praying for guidance and you're still confused in life. God says, continue praying and I will answer with a yes at one point. Some of you are praying for a spouse, either for a future spouse or a spouse that you have right now. Continue praying for the spouse. Some of you are praying for friends. Some of you are praying for your children. Some of you are praying for a job. And still some of you are praying for peace. Just for peace to, be, to, to, to settle in your life. And for some time, God has been answering no. Trust God that he does not abandon anyone who comes to him. So I just want to encourage you to, to turn to God for guidance and for his grace. Remember, he has a bigger purpose. He has a better perspective and he has a bigger plan for you, a better plan for you. Trust him, and he will lead you in that plan. Tell him how much you trust him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how hard it is to stay faithful. You know it's not easy to be faithful to God because of all the temptations and all the situations and all the struggles. Tell him, Lord, today I have been unfaithful, and it's so hard for me, and I'm struggling to be faithful. Tell him that, and he will strengthen your faith. And tell him that you are ready to accept his plan for your life. Humble yourself and accept his plan for your life. We're going to sing right now. And as we sing, I want you to just reach out to God and, you know, maybe just bow your heads just where you are and, Maybe you need to just turn to someone on your right or on your left and ask them to pray for you because God is answering no. Maybe you want one of the pastors to pray for you. I'm I'm gonna be here. I I would love to pray for you if you want to just come up here and pray. And uh, as we worship, let's reach out and call out to God and ask Him to lead us and guide us and not abandon us in in, in this time. Amen. Let's stand as worship.